hinder me from living. Because what you have to know about me is I don't like to lose. So when I'm put in a position where I feel like I'm losing, I'm dialing in. I'm dialing in. And when I'm dialing in, I'm focused because I'm going to move this thing that's sitting in front of me. And so because I'm dialed in, you might see all the emotions on my soul in my face. But it doesn't mean that I, I'm not believing God. Because I'm just trying to find out which way we're going to do this thing, God. I need you to reveal to me how I get this mountain out in front of me. Because, because believing for salvation isn't the tool that moves that mountain. I already have that. That's not that faith. Right? It's not a healing faith because it's not a sickness. You see what I'm saying? I got to find, I got to find the right divine revelation to teach me how to do that which is in front of me. So, so a lot of times we go to God saying, God, I believe you. Well, what are you believing for? I believe that you're going to move this. Well, no, Jamal, I empowered you to move it. I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. Get in your toolbox, son. Learn how to be effective. Learn how to take, per, have your purpose make you effective in the land. So I'm like, man. So even though, even though I have a frustration, it's not a groaning. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. And so because it's a challenge, that's how we look at life. We don't look at life as, oh, woe is me. No, we look at life like, okay, here's my next challenge. Because when we overcome this thing and we move the mountain, we've learned how that thing can never come back and sit down in front of us because now we've been, our purpose has made us effective. And because we've effective, that thing has been moved. It can never, it can never oppose us in that way. It can never swell and, 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 and take up that much space in our lives again because we've overcome it. So even, though, so even though I have to find out how to move this thing and it's frustrating. <laughs> Word up. That's right. It took the training wheels off. So, so, so check this out. When the challenger comes up against us, do we battle with it so long to where it's like, okay, you win. You're not even opposition no more. I'm just going to go another way. I can't get that way, so I'm just going to go another way. Or do we stand there and deal with this thing? Or do we stand here and deal with it? Oh, no, you're going to move. Oh, you're going to move. Oh, Tisa, if, if, if he's, if, but, but what I'm saying is, what, what I'm saying is, we do wait on God, but if he's empowered us to overcome, if he's empowered us to move the mountain, because he tells us that we can move the mountain. So if he, if he tells us that, then do, are we really waiting on God? Yes, yes, and, and I understand exactly what you're saying, but, but, looking for example, Rolodex, I, I ain't found one yet, that's right, he does, right, but, 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 but what I'm saying is, If you go at the obstacle the wrong way, believe in God, and it still don't move, 
then, but then you go at the obstacle the right way, with the right tools, with the right faith, and it moves. Dre. He just started saying, I thank you for my healing. Because, because there is developed faith. There is developed faith. And, man, your faith can produce And, and it's not like it's not like if your faith is producing more in mind that God loves you more than me or, or, or because he says he's no respecter of persons. But you have this crazy, radical, pit bull, tenacious kind of faith that even in the face of adversity, you you walk in that power. And so a lot of times we allow things to wear us out. When. He has given us the ability to handle it through him by faith. Okay. When, perfect example. I think it's Genesis chapter six, somewhere seven. It says that, when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, right? And they were all in one place, and they started building the Tower of Babel, right? And as they were building the Tower of Babel, God said, go down and confound their language, right? He said, because they're on one accord, and can nothing be held back from them. They, anything they want to do, they'll be able to do. Anything they want to do, they'll be able to do because they're operating. So God had to mix that thing up real quick and you go over there, you go over there. Because you're trying to get to me the wrong way. And even though you're trying to get to me the wrong way, because you operating on one accord, there's nothing that cannot happen. So, so, so if that empowerment is within man, and then we get the first fruits of the Spirit, Holy Spirit. And then we get this thing called faith to mingle with it. And we line all these things up to God. What can't man do? What is it that man can't do? Because faith alone, faith alone. Okay, for instance, check this out. You believe in right. There's a promotion that you want. And you believe in precisely right, but you're not ready for the position. Because you haven't, you haven't polished enough. Now, there's some people that get the position unpolished. But a lot of times you, you believe in God precisely right, but you haven't done the right step, taken the right steps in order to withhold the position. You have the right skills, but the mindset's wrong. And I'm going to tell you why. I had a job, right? And he elevated four of us to team leaders. And what I didn't know was he was watching us because he was about to elevate managers, two of them, right? So he raised up four of us. I'm running around closing my deals, store deals, and the other team leaders' deals. I'm closing everybody's deals. Saturday morning comes, and we have the meeting, and we come out of the meeting, and I'm walking, and I'm thinking, a couple hours go by, I said, where's the other team leaders at? Why well, I'm the only one running around here like my, with my head cut off. So I kind of slipped back through the office, and they were sitting in the boss's, boss's office, just them two. So I walked in the door, I said, man, what are y'all doing? And they just looked at each other. 
I said, man, are you going to talk or tell me what's going on? He said, Susan's going in the tower and I'm going into finance. I said, what? What did you just say? Let me tell you something. The three of them, team leaders, I sold more cars than all three of them put together. All three of them put together every month. I come out in the sales tower. I come to my manager. I said, can I talk to you? That's what I did here. Can I talk to you? He comes in his office. Hey, Jamal, what's going on? I said, Susan and Bob just told me that you, you made them managers. I did. I said, man, I said, I run circles around them. He said, Jamal, you're not ready to be a manager. I said, what? I said, you're just trying to use me, man. You just want me to stay on the floor to sell all your cars. He said, no, I'm not trying to use you. You're not ready to be a manager. I said, what are you talking about? He said, this conversation right here lets me know that you're not ready to be a manager. Yes, you closed all deals this month. Yes, you sold more cars than anybody in here. But you don't, you're not ready, attitude-wise. I walked out of, this, out of that joint, walked out of the door, big snow pal. Bam! Preacher. I'm preacher, too. Preacher. Kicked snow straight up in there. Bam! Walk to the back of the lot. I'm standing in the back of the lot for an hour. Hot. I ain't selling nothing today. Well, if I don't sell nothing, I won't get paid. So I'm back there pouting, mad. And then, I, and then you know what? A month ago, I messaged that man on Facebook, and I said, man, you were my greatest manager and my greatest lesson. I thank God for you. Because that one incident taught me so much. I had the skill set. I was believing for that thing. I got raised up to qualify for it. But my attitude wasn't right. My attitude wasn't right. I came in the door believing for that position. And when them four years went by, and he elevated me right to the place where I said, okay, the door is almost open, Jamal. All you got to do is walk through it. But I was cocky. I had the wrong attitude. I had the wrong disposition, I had all those things, and I failed. And I failed right at the door. It was laid out before me. And so what I'm trying to tell you is there's a tool that moves the mountain, but you've got to be able to use it the right way. Do you run from it? Because you said, you, the reason what got me here is you said you come up against things and then it's like, ah, and then you just get over it. And I was saying what that sounded like to me was you just went the other way. Okay. Yeah, that's good stuff. Mm -hmm.
continually in the spirit, no matter what I'm doing. If I make two dollars, two hundred dollars, you know. When I see my customers, I like old folks and stuff. You know, like for instance, this is an old lady I go help out for free sometimes. She's got a lot of tired. She's like eighty something years old, can't do it. And I said to her one day, Look, I said, I want you to remember something. God's up in heaven right now, putting all the way down on earth at this little pin drop of a spot and saying, You see that right there? You might not be wonderful, but you're full of the wonder. Yeah, yes, I am. Yes. Oh man, three good notices. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. 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 So I said to myself, 
comfortable. Well, you comfortable right now? You comfortable? All right. You know, because I'm not ashamed of where I was, All where right. I've been, or where I'm going. Because yeah. I know where my future lies. But there was a time, you know, when I've been talking like this, we've all been just talk. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's more like all walk. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm walking it, and every day there's a new revelation, and it, it's a new victory. And I've had, uh, you know, you have your, uh, what do you call it, where Satan's just got you bound on something. Mm -hmm. A little air, you know, smoke and this, that, whatever. God has took me smoking, he's took me weed. Excuse me, ladies. You know, he's breaking porn. He's breaking it. I mean, I'm like, I think I've got the victory now, but I ain't going to shout too early. I'm oh, shout. No, shout. This is what I'm talking about. That's the faith that you need. You need to shout now. Well, I, I was on the way down here. Believe <laughs> That's good stuff. You know, and I posted that because I want, you know, I want people that know me to know what I'm doing because no matter who they are or what they're into, I'm still setting an example for them. Whether they're more mature than me or less mature than me in the word, I'm still an example. You know, even 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 a guy like me can inspire you somehow sometimes. You know, You're doing right now. Well, I'm just saying, you know, and so I know that God uses me every minute of the day. That's right. Now I just look for those opportunities because the blessings I wanted, they're automatic. Uh, why am I looking for them anymore? You know, let's look at what I can do for him to thank him. So that's that's kind of how I walk now. And uh, I use any means possible, like my daughter's allowance, to get it, you know, to get church, get something in them, talk to them, preach them. You know, just let them know. So you, so, you, so you use your time, talents, and treasures? Yes. All right, well, listen. I want you to feel 100% comfortable here because, because no, 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 no. Any pastor would want someone who is willing to give their whole life up to the spreading of the gospel. And I give up my time, talents, and treasures just for the word of God, right? And I've been doing it for 12 years, and it's brought me to this point. So I want you to feel 100% comfortable. I don't care how you praise God. Don't let the people that you're around hinder your praise. I want you to worship God and freely praise God in this place because it may be you that stirs this whole place up. It may be you that stirs this whole place up. And, and so don't ever feel uncomfortable because... No, forget them. Forget them. Yes, right. Show my daughter yeah. just that. Yeah. That it's not a bad place, it's a bad God. That's right. You know, uh, and so that, you know, just, I, I do that because it's just situations. You know, I yeah. Know, it's just situations. That, and I want her to go up to know that people are people. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on, Wayne, give me 24. Give me 824. Uh huh. What about it? I said enough. Oh, okay. 824. Sorry, I no, that's all good. That was good stuff. That was good stuff. No, Wayne. 824, the scripture. There we go. So for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why do he yet hoped for. So, for we are saved by hope. That means you're expecting something. But are you saved? Are you saved? But if so if you're saved, then how can you be hoping for it? Because it says, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. Huh? Faith what? Faith 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Okay. All right. I'm riding with that. Amplified Bible says, for in this hope we were saved, but hope, the object of, which is not hope, for how can one hope for what he already sees? So if it's faith, well, no, 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 well, wait a minute, no, not that, because if, it, if it's faith, for faith is the substance of things hoped for. And evidence of things not seen, right? So we are saved by hope. Why? I said at the very beginning of Bible study. We believe. We do believe. You're exactly right. But you got to understand that what Paul's really talking about is this final stage. He's talking about this final stage. And so even though everyone in this room can say, I'm saved without a doubt, our salvation doesn't come to fruition until we see Jesus. So we, listen, so listen, if you can say that you possess salvation now, but it doesn't come to fruition until, it doesn't manifest until we see him, how much more can you say right now that you have that you don't have that won't take well, don't, don't won't come to fruition until later? Okay, a depressed person says, "All I want is just a little bit of peace and a little bit of joy, but I'm saved. But you're saved by hope, so you're expecting to get to a place. But you can raise your hand right now and say that I am saved. But because depression has a feeling to it. And so because you don't feel like you're joyful or you feel like peace, you don't believe that you have it. Yes, I, without a doubt, fruit of the Spirit, fruit, the Holy Spirit comes and brings kingdom inside of you. But you can say I'm saved, lasso on the moon, that's what I talked about Sunday. You can say I'm saved and lasso the moon, but you can't lasso peace. Your hope has to feel peace before you believe you have it. But you don't know how this thing's going to come about other than the grave's going to open up. It's going to be me, but it ain't going to be me because I'm going to be withered away. And I'm going to be sown a mortal body and raised an immortal body. I don't know how that's going to take place, but I'm believing Jesus for it. And because I know I ain't going to hell, I'm going to believe for this new body. I don't know how this is going to happen, though, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to take on this, this faith. I'm going to believe for it. But I, 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 I you know, life is just too hard out. I don't know how I'm going to get some peace in my life. I just don't know how I'm going to get that. You can't believe for the next five minutes of your life to be joyful. But you can believe for an eternal salvation. That's backwards. It's backwards. Because you believe in God for the ultimate. But you can't believe God for the minute. And so, so from, from just having peace, because, because when we come to God, when we come to God, he instills everything in us. He gives us all of him, and we possess it. How each person walks away after they possess the kingdom really, truly matters. So, Some people go on for years still trying to feel God instead of believing God because it's it's backwards. Man is used to saying, I possess it because I feel it. I possess it because I see it. 
So check us out, right. But, but it took you a while. So for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. So if you can't see your salvation, what makes you say that I'm saved? Belief or fear? Come on, belief or fear? Right. Is it belief or fear? Because if we can't, if we can't get to the minute, if we just can't get to the bottom, listen, if we just couldn't get to, to the next meal, if we just couldn't believe God for the next minute thing in our life, but we're believing for this extravagant event to take place, search yourself. You see what I'm saying? We must search ourselves to say, okay, do I really believe in this salvation or am I'm, am I I'm, or am I still in a place of hoping for it? And if I'm hoping for it, do I really possess it? Because is this back to self-preservation again? Is this back to me saying, heaven or hell? The Bible says, for me to get to heaven, I must believe that he is. So I latch on, I latch on to faith, I latch on to it, but I'm, I'm looking at this hell. And then I question my faith as I go through life. I begin to question, I begin to sample and taste and deal with and hit or miss kind of things. But I'm holding on to the salvation. But I can't believe for anything else. But I'm holding on for salvation. But I can't believe for that. I'm holding on to salvation. No, 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 no. I'm talking about me. God's, God's done, done what he's going to do. What I'm saying is, what, what I'm saying is, I'm not believing God for anything else but my salvation. And the same faith that I, that I believe with salvation is going to be the same faith I got to believe God with for peace, but it has to come in a different way. Got to use it in a different way. Because I'm believing for something external to happen. Something that he's done. But with that same faith, I got to latch on to something for myself. See, because God did this. God did salvation when Jesus died on the cross and raised from the dead. All you got to do is get in. Look, all you look, that river's flowing. You just jump in it and believe God for salvation. I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's gotten to the point where more people are just confessing it than believing it. And see, this is God's forbearance. He gives you experiences so you, can, so you can believe what you confessed. He gives you experiences so you can truly believe what you confess. So because, because he is the God of mercy, so he holds off wrath and is waiting for you to truly find this faith so you can at least just get to heaven. But there's a faith that we have to deal with today. It just latches on to peace. Listen, if we could, oh, hold on one second, please. If we could just latch on to peace, imagine the things that could explode from this place. You did. Contentment and satisfaction. Come on, Tisa.
That's good stuff. So fast. Like, I went through a fast, a 12-hour fast. So I did, and wrote down every scripture I was meditating on, and a job called me that day. And I told them I'm reading the Bible and gave my notes because I was ready to go. Sometimes we're not ready for what we're asking. So then we don't see it, and we're wondering why. But you have to be in the mode, the, the mode to be ready for it. Because I had to, when they called me, the husband came off your job, the first thing he said to me, if you don't get through and you make it, I'm going to get I understand what I've done. Understand what I'm doing, and I know why I've done it, and I'm trusting that He's going to listen. And God is going to take care of me because that's the thing that I had to do. I was to be one of financially take care of my household, and I haven't lost nothing yet. And He's been taking care of me since, and I haven't worked. I haven't even started working since tomorrow, but He's taking care of me, and He's put things right in order for me. So that's where faith comes in, and it's been one of them was when I was fasting. When I went through my fast, I forget what book it was, and I was trying to find it. it was That's good stuff. Yeah. It, it, yeah. That's right. Because cause check this out. When Early in my walk, I got a job at Ruby Tuesdays in Winchester, right? And I said, listen, I can't work on Sundays. I got to go to church. They said, oh, no problem, no problem. We're going to put you on the schedule. So, you know, I'm working there for about a month, month and a half, maybe two months. I come one Friday, look at the schedule. I said, yo, I, I told you I go to church. Oh, man, uh, we, we won't do it no more. Just work this Sunday. I go out back. I'm like, Teresa, I quit. She's like, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. You can't quit. I'm out back at the store. Come get me now. No, Jamal, don't quit. Now, you got to understand where I'm at. I'm, I'm, I'm. Two drug charges. I'm just starting to go to church. She's 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 got me where she's finally wanted me after 12 years, right? A working man, right? I said, okay, okay, okay. I come back to work the next week. They got me on the schedule. I said, it's Friday. I said, I asked y'all not to put me on the schedule. I go to church. He said, nobody worried about your church attendance. Get back here on that line and go to work. I went back on the line. I started cooking. I'm here, my wife. No, you can't quit. I heard this. You can go now. Walked out back. I said, Teresa, God said I can leave. She said, okay, I'm on my way. She come and got me. I went to the time clock. I clocked, clocked out. The dude said, where are you going? I said, I've been given permission to leave. He said, by who? I said, God, see you later. Friday, I'm sitting at home. Saturday came. Sunday, I'm sitting outside the house. I ain't going to forget it. She's cooking pork chops. She's cooking pork chops, frying them up. I'm sitting outside thinking, oh, God. Okay, now, look. I'm seriously, I'm okay now, God. What are we going to do about this? Blah, blah, I'm talking to him. Jamal, telephone. I'll come inside. Say hello. Jamal, you, you still looking for a job? I said, man, who calls somebody on Sunday for a job? <laughs> yes, I'm still looking for a job. Okay, we're going to start you out at uh, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, that's 2 dollars more than what I was making. Okay, when do I start? Tomorrow. I said, bet I'll be there. I was thinking, dang, them pork chops done? Because I, because, because I heard from God. I heard from God. My will was lined up to serve him. And so because my will was lined up to serve him, if I would have left the first time, it would have been out of my aggravation. Even when the man said to me, ain't nobody worried about your church attendance, I could have left right there. I went back to the line and started working. I heard him say, now you can go. I said, oh, I've been given permission. Check this out. I still had to believe him to come through for me. I left there and went to Cork Street Tavern and filled out an application. But I still had to believe for him to provide for me. Because walking out of that place, 
It was like, now what are we going to do? Man, um, let me tell you something. Faith is the greatest tool that we have. So back to this, we are saved by hope. But don't believe in this hope and see what happens. Can you lose your salvation? Can you forfeit it? How? No, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is not Lord. Believe it. Believe that he's not Lord. Believe that he wasn't raised from the dead. Oh, there's going to be apostates. Second Thessalonians, I think it's Second Thessalonians, first and second Thessalonians. Paul says to them, they thought that they missed Jesus. They thought that the day had came. And he says, listen, listen, listen. Don't worry about it. He said, until there's a great falling away and the son of perdition comes, you ain't got nothing to worry about. And the great falling away translates as this word means apostasy, an apostate. And that will be people who turn away from Jesus, who will reject Jesus, who once had him. Hebrews, Hebrews 2 or 6, not 6, because 6 starts talking about Melchizedek. I think it's Hebrews 2. I think so. It talks about, it talks about how... Um, we can't crucify Christ all over again. And it talks about how those who have fallen away from the faith. Apostasy, I'm telling you, man, I'm going to tell you something. As we get closer, if it comes within our breathing time, as we get closer to that day, you'll see churches slim down. They're already slimming down. They're already slimming down. But you'll see Christians start to walk away from the faith. I'm telling you some good stuff. Oh, yeah. That's a growing number. That's a growing number. Come on, let's, let, real quick. Come on, Wayne. So for unto a for unto a state of hope we were were we saved. A state of hope. What's that mean? A state. Okay, okay, so so okay. When you were born you were born into a state of sin. You didn't do anything. You took your first breath and you moved straight into sin. A state of sin. You become born again and you move into a state of righteousness. You don't do anything to produce any righteousness, but you come into a state of righteousness by faith. Sola fide, by faith alone. Right? So within this state of righteousness, we begin to believe for the things of God. So check us out. So check us out. You were in a state of sin, and that state produced some things in your life. Now you're in a state of righteousness, and it's starting to produce something in your life. But to what degree does this thing unleash to you based on the fact of your faith levels? Because that's the only thing that can hinder a Christian, what you can believe for. Tisa, if you didn't seek God, where would you be right now? Up on that mountain. You'd be up on that mountain. Mad. <laughs> Calling me. <laughs> Calling me. And no matter what I told you over the last year, you had to believe God for yourself. You'd call me for advice, and I'd say, well, Tisa, uh, and then, you know, I because I, I don't have anything for that situation. 
Yeah. You knew you was. But you had to get to the place where you could believe him, right? Oh, you wanted to leave. When I was out there, when I, listen, I've been off my job for a year and two months. You came to my job at least four months before I quit. And you were sitting there talking about, ah, look, I'm leaving Victor Collins. So that's at least 16 months ago. Not saying what? Finance is what? Okay. just run the gamut on Bible study tonight, how important is our faith? How, how, it is the greatest commodity of the Christian walk. It's it. Yeah. It, it, that's it. It's the greatest commodity. So, because, because, because grace is a gift that enables us to have faith. It's given to us, right? But if you take that thing and bottle it up and keep it right here, or you will unleash it and allow it to permeate every aspect of your life, then what happens? You unleash your faith and start believing, listen, and start believing God for like crazy stuff. Crazy. I mean, like, what? What you going to do in New York? What's going to happen for you? What if they tell you no, Brittany? Huh? See what I'm saying? What if they tell you no? What if, the, what, what if you stand in front of somebody that tells you no, but there's somebody in the room that you don't expect to be in the room that could tell you yes? And when you're sitting there and they tell you no, and you're like, what do you mean? What do you mean, no? Or, or, or do you position yourself completely and believe God completely? No matter what man tells you, you know that this thing is going to come to pass. Or do you get to go play in New York and sample it and never get to get it? You see what I'm saying? I don't know if you wanted to go, Alex. I, I said, uh, you. <laughs> I don't know if you want to go all the way to New York. I know my daughter keeps talking about she want to go to New York University. I don't want to go away to New York to go to school. I feel like New York will eat my baby up. One more slide. It's 8.30. We're going to stick to the time. We're going to stick to the time. Come on. This places it along with all creation and hope, whereas verse 24 announces unto a state of hope where we save. There is a longing for an expectation of something better, no matter what spiritual blessing comes to the believer, that this that is longed for is, of course, the liberty of the glory that belongs by God's grace to the children of God. So, so listen. Listen to this. It's still talking about this future thing, but it says this that is longed for is, of course, the liberty of the glory that belongs by God's grace, to the children of God. Okay, so you're telling me that there's a future event that is supposed to happen, but I own it now. I own the glory now. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. In Hebrews it says that you can't have the inheritance until the death of the testator happens. Jesus died. I said this last Tuesday. Jesus died. You possess, you possess all of it now. Right? Inheritance. 
You possess it. This glory. How much of it are you going to experience right now today? How much of this glory do you want to experience? Because, because the glory comes along with just being a Christian. It takes us to operate in Christianity by faith. Okay, a person who doesn't... I can't... Okay, I want you to tell me if I'm wrong. I want you to be completely honest. You look like you've never cussed in your life. (laughs) 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 But no, I, I perceive you of a person of high morality. Okay, that's what I perceive. I might be wrong. You might have me fooled, right? But I perceive that, right? So it could be easy for you to be, to walk in integrity, right? So that might not be your challenge. You see what I'm saying? And so someone would perceive her integrity and her morality as that she's a good Christian, where she knows exactly what God is telling her to come up in, but because she's perceived that she walks in great integrity, she's perceived by man that, that she's a good Christian. So being, being this Christian and believing God by faith and doing what we know is not necessarily an outward appearance. It's, it's hearing God, receiving the instructions, because, because we can get the instructions and not receive them. It's hearing God, receiving the instructions, and then manifesting life based on those instructions. So say her morality, her outward morality and integrity is in opposition, but she's the greatest liar that ever existed. Just hypothetically. And God says, begins to call her on the carpet about her lying. But outwardly, outwardly, everyone perceives her as the model Christian. People are modeling their life after her. But in order for her to be able to operate in this Christianity and this faith, she first has to believe God that when she tells the truth, that her perceived outcomes won't come to pass. So, even though the world thinks she's super Christian, God has been dealing with her lies. And because he's been dealing with her lies, she now has to start operating in the truth. And expect God to go before her to be able to... Because, because most lies are a projection of what's going to happen anyway. And so that's what has to take place. That you've got to believe God. So, so, so see what I'm saying? We believe God for salvation, but we can't believe God for the most minute things in life. And I'm not saying that you're a liar. I mean, you know, I don't know. I dress it up good. Oh, God. <laughs> But do you feel me? So, so this stuff that belongs to us, because you said it earlier, if God be for me, then who can be against me? So it doesn't matter how people perceive me. As long as God is pleased with my living, and I do exactly what he tells me to do. And so I go all the way around this uh, 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 mulberry bush, to say, if we just do what we already know, we'll be better Christians anyway. Amen? Come on, give God praise. Good Bible study. We got one and a half verses done. We're really by one. No, man, this happens all the time. We've been, we've been in Romans, the book of Romans, since April 2014. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And 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 the, the 
this is how far we've gotten. And we still got eight, eight chapters to go. Check us out. Uh, we've been fasting, right? I was going to hold this to Sunday. I'll probably say it again. But um, I go to uh, this, this pizza place in Martinsburg called Roma's, right? And I asked the man, I said, do y'all have crumbled sausage or sliced sausage, right? I said, I know it's a crazy question. Right? He said, no, we have crumble. I said, well, just give me pepperoni then, right? But before that, I fat, fat, rewind. Before that, there's a young boy standing at the counter in front of me, and he says, how much are your sodas? So I, I'm behind him, and I'm thinking, okay, he, he don't have a lot of money. And the guy says, $1.75. He said, how much is a slice and a soda? He said, four fifty. So the boy goes. And I'm behind him, off to the side. He's going like this. I said, hey, man, you don't have enough? And he said, no, nah. and when he turned around, he had two fives and four ones. I said, man, you got enough right there. He said, no, nah, man, this is baby mama's money. He said, when, when, you, when you, you get off child support, it's like they ask you for everything. So he was like, I was like, yo, I, I, I'll, I'll take care of the rest for you, right? So I pulled out a 20, and he went to take it. I said, no, give me the $4. I'm going to pay for it. So I paid for it. So I'm sitting there. And then I go through the thing with the man. He tells me, and I tell him, well, the reason why I asked, because I grew up with Rocky's Pizza here. He said, man, I owned all three of them when uh, I lived in Hagerstown. I said, well, I only know Vinny. He said, Vinny's my little brother. We get to talk and chop it up. Well, I turn around, and I hear God clearly. Get that boy some money. I pull my wallet out. I went over to him. I laid $20 on the table in front of him, right? And uh, he looked up at me. And... Um, I said, man, I understand, man. He said, man, like that, right? And I go back and talk to the dude and blah, blah, blah. And as I'm walking out, I say to him, I wasn't even going to stop here because I've been fasting and I was struggling with going to get the pizza and everything, right, because I've been eating healthy. And uh, I said, I wasn't even going to stop here, but I just felt compelled to stop, right? I said, just know that God put me in this place for you at the right time. Didn't tell him I was pastor. Didn't tell him where the church was at. He said, man, thanks, man. Man, you don't know how bad I needed this. I said, man, God bless you. I got in the car and drove off and went on about my business. Never told him I was pastor. Never tried to witness to him. I just dropped the seed on him because, because you know, th that's it. That, that's, that's living for Christ. And listen, I don't have a whole lot of money. I don't have a whole lot of money. But as long as I operate in that, man, my provisions are just going to keep coming, man. As long as I live by faith and operate like that, how, listen, I'm feeding somebody else. How can I not eat? How can I not eat? That's right. That's right. You never know. Just be obedient to God. Just be a Christian, man. Just be the Christians that God has called us to. And I'm telling you, this thing is going to work for you. It's going to work for you. He, man, psh.